<laughs> hey, what is going on, everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and welcome to my second channel here where I have Thrifty Gaming Pickups, a show where I do this on here with my dog, Lily, over there, who is eating the remnants of a tree. You know, I'll give you another treat, Lily. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Lily, sit. There we go. All right, that was good enough. So what I do is, this is my dog Lily, where we always make these videos together here. And I go and kind of just show you all what I have picked up every episode from garage sales, game store sales, uh, bookstore sales, thrift shops mainly. So that's what we're going to get into as well here. I have enough stuff where I feel like this can make a good episode uh, overall. It's not too much, it's not too little, and I, I think we'll make do with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a seat, and we'll start taking a look at everything that we have here. So first of all, uh, I kind of got you know so a, a mix of different sales and all that. This has been from the past few weeks or so, uh, but let's go ahead and tackle this pile here since this is the closest one uh, i ended up going to this is from tonight actually end up going to a thrift shop and uh, end up getting these games that were on sale first of all this was quite surprising to me no this is not a weird import obviously since it says rated m uh, no this is not a bootleg either uh, this is of course metal gear solid on the playstation one some of you all might not have seen this as you can see it has a full manual there both the discs in a uh, black label form, it seems, which I have not seen until now. Uh, but this ended up being $2 after the discount. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this after I get through the rest. Or you know what? No, we'll talk about it now. Uh, for anyone who is not aware of this release, this one, as you can see here, it says it was part of a set. At one point in the PS2's life cycle, they ended up releasing a trilogy where it was Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, it had a nice sleeve with it. It had all three of the games that were in a set kind of like this, but it included the first one which wasn't an issue because you know hey it makes up the trilogy and if you have a ps2 you can obviously play ps1 games since all ps2s had ps1 backwards compatibility built in i kind of miss having that as a default feature on systems but you know that's a whole other story point is on there this came included in it and from what i understand i think this is kind of worth a bit as well too just because it's a odd variant it's it's a straight up you know nice looking ps1 dvd cover variant of the game and again this was complete and everyone well, complete i want to say it's complete for this but it doesn't have the slip cover and they didn't have the second and third games even though it says it's not it's part of a set and to not separate it many stores separated it which is the reality of these things but yeah this will play standalone just fine so that's that this is only metal gear solid it's the first one uh but it's just in a standard you know it's not a CD jewel case, it's a DVD case, which it's interesting to see. That's a nice piece to have in the collection now. And it was only $2, so that definitely surprised me. Uh, starting off with, honestly, one of my favorite pickups here. Next up, I end up getting Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. Never played this on the original Xbox. I actually never played Doom 3 or Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. I'm hoping they're good ports on there. And this was $2 as well. And Big Mother Truckers 2 ended up grabbing this um, because I said, you know what, screw it, we'll just go ahead and get it. I did think these were going to be cheaper, uh, and I'm going to get into the pricing on that later on, uh, but this ended up being $3, so you know what, all added up, at least in this haul, that was $7 worth of games. I didn't mind that all too much. Now, this is not a game. But I felt like it would be appropriate to include it in here. This is the last pickup I got tonight. And this is from a media sale that these thrift stores were having. Some of the ones that I went to, at least. They were having a $1 sale on all books and DVDs. Uh, now, one of the stores included games. Uh, this one that I went to to pick this one up here... Uh, I didn't see any games I wanted, so I couldn't test that, but this store, this is what I was talking about. This one I went to, apparently they did not include the games, so instead of paying a dollar, I paid two, two, and three, which is still good enough on there. I don't mind that. Um, but here, end up getting the first season of Red vs. Blue, one of the, I think this is probably like the original super successful like mainstream machinima i want to say yeah as i said first season of red versus blue this is the dvd of it and i rarely get dvds now the only times i really get a dvd is if it's something that's not available in hd 
or it's really cheap, uh, or it's something that I'm actually looking for, or it's some kind of a combination of those. This ticked two of the three boxes. I guess maybe three three. Uh, let me get into that. So it was very cheap. It was only a dollar. Um, it ended up being something I'm kind of looking for because I have, I think, two other seasons of Red vs. Blue, and I picked them up as DVDs at thrift stores for two or three dollars each. Uh, and then on top of that, this is the original machinimas that were made in Halo 1. And that stuff was not in HD at all. So there's no master source that they can do that from. One of my best friends, shout out to Tanner, uh, he absolutely loves Red vs. Blue. He's got the box set and everything. He knows a lot of the lineage. I think he subscribes to Rooster Teeth as well, like pays the subscription. Um, but point is on there, I believe that he had told me that they actually ended up going back and they remastered all the episodes, so to speak, on one of the HD Halo games. I want to say they remastered them in Reach. Because in case you don't know, this is a machinima, which machinima is... It's not just a channel on YouTube. It's not just a company. Machinima was a term that was created to describe movies that are made using video games. And these were made in the original Halo. So as I said, that remaster they did, uh, they ended up doing it. I believe it was in Reach where they went back and they remade the original seasons that were made in Halo 1 and Halo 2. They made them in Halo Reach to make them nice and pretty in HD. Plus they had the eater mode on there. So that made it easier as well. That was a lot to talk about with just DVD. But yeah, season one of Red vs. Blue did not have it. I've actually won it for a while. And this will suffice until I get the box set. One of these days, I will buy the box set just to have everything. Um, but until that happens, I'll continue to pick up the DVDs at thrift stores as I find them. All right, so I'll just take these all, give them to the dog here. There you go, Lily. There you go. Yeah, they have plenty of character. And we'll continue onwards here. So, this is something I actually did not have in the collection. I actually didn't even have Forza Motorsport 3, surprisingly enough. But I did not have this. But it's also the double pack, which was Halo 3 ODST with Forza Motorsport 3. This came bundled with uh, several Xbox 360 bundles about the middle of its life cycle. At that point, uh, there were several friends I had that were picking up Xbox 360s, and I actually recommended getting that bundle because it came with these two games, and a lot of them wanted to play Halo as one of their defaults, and I said, well, hey, if you get that, you can pick up Halo 3, like, standalone, because it had the campaign. I would tell them, well, you can pick up Halo 3 for, like... I don't know, $20 used at the time, but you should also buy the bundle that comes with this because even if you don't care about Forza, it'll come with Halo 3 ODST, which is a campaign you probably don't care about, but it comes with a second disc, which is multiplayer only for Halo 3 and contains every single map. So it's all the mo literally all the multiplayer. So that's why I recommend, at least if you're going to be playing, if you have any interest at all in playing Halo 3 online on the Xbox 360, pick up Halo 3 ODST. Make sure it has both discs, because that second disc, the multiplayer disc, will come with all of the maps. It is all the stock maps, all the DLC maps, and I believe there's even a set of maps that is locked to the disc. I, I want to say there is, because I think there was Heroic, Legendary, and Mythic. Those were the map packs. It's been a while. It's been a while. I don't remember if cold storage is on there, but for some reason, I remember that this disc contains everything, even some stuff that you couldn't download. So either way, that's what I'd recommend. But point being on here, this ended up being 250 from a Goodwill. So it's pretty happy about that. It seemed to be in solid shape as well, too. Let's go ahead and move that over. Next up, I'll go to, well, talk to you all about a new thrift store that ended up opening up. End up grabbing these from there and uh, got some good deals on them here. So first of all, here is a wireless Logitech PS2 controller that seems to be in solid enough shape, except I took the batteries out when I was at the shop and I didn't care for them, so... I left them out, but there seems to be some corrosion there, so I haven't really messed with corroded stuff, I'll be honest, but I have like two or three controllers that have corrosion in them. If you all have any tips on restoring, cleaning that up, I would love to hear them. Please drop them down below in the comment section uh, before I attack corroded stuff for the first time. But either way, these wireless controllers, they're nice. They're a bit hard to find. If you do find them, they're not as expensive as the Xbox Logitech wireless controllers, but they're 
you know, mid price, mid range price, I want to say 20, 30 bucks or so. And you need a receiver as well. But whenever I find these, I do like to pick them up. So this said it was $6.99, so seven bucks. I end up getting it for five. So that was nice. Uh, I also, normally when I see controllers, I like to pick them up when I can. I got a PlayStation 1 or original PlayStation controller. And it seems to be in pretty solid shape as well, too. And they were nice about it. They said because, because it didn't have a price on it, but because it was one of the older ones, it was an older controller and it was wired, they set it for $2.99, which, I mean, I really don't even have to do much aside from just cleaning this to get the general thrift storiness of this out of there. But $3, sure. End up getting a couple of games as well, too, from this new store. So I got Call of Duty 3, which I have not owned on the 360 until now. So I've heard... I've heard two things about this game. People either absolutely love it and have crazy nostalgia for it and say it was one of the best Call of Duties... Or they don't like it at all, and they said it was horrible. Uh, this was actually by Treyarch, and at the time, this is when, in my opinion, my my opinion here, mind you, uh, they did not make very good Call of Duty. It was Infinity Ward versus Treyarch, and they would swap back and forth. And at the time, Treyarch was... They were kind of known for making the bad ones, like Call of Duty 3, a lot of people panned it. Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 4, people loved those ones. Uh, World at War, again, split down the middle. People either loved it or hated it. I was one of the people I hated World at War. They really didn't, like, Treyarch really didn't start getting the Call of Duty respect until, I would say, Black Ops. And it was more, it was because Black Ops had a lot more people that liked it than before. So instead of it being, you know, like a 50-50 split of, people like it, people don't like it. I would almost say it was like a 75-25 of people liking the game. Um, so yeah, and, and now it almost seems like everyone unanimously says that in recent years, Treyarch makes a superior Call of Duties, which I will say they do pack more of a punch. Like if you look at Black Ops 3, for example... I know people are getting excited for Black Ops 4 coming out, but like Black Ops 3, uh, they really jam-packed that. I gotta respect them for it, because it had the regular campaign, it had the zombies campaign, it had the zombies mode, it had the multiplayer mode, it had really good support. They really gave you a good package for that. So, anyways, I paid $5 for this. Maybe a little bit, I, I would say a little bit more than thrift store price, because that's what would be expected on here. Um, it might go for a little bit more at game shops. So either way, $5 for that. I didn't mind it all too much. And finally, I got Punch-Out on the Wii, which this was surprisingly brand new. Uh, now, funny enough, this was actually packaged with a... It was like a Punch-Out. It was a knockout type thing. And it was literally called like a, a knockout glove or accessory. Because I asked, this was behind the counter, and it was bundled with it. And I asked like, hey, how much is Punch-Out? And the lady was like, oh, you mean knockout? I said, no, punch out. And she said, oh, I was looking at the big box there. And this together with the accessory was like $14. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want that accessory. I don't need it at all. Uh, but I asked them, I said, well, I don't want the accessory. I want the game. How much would the game be? And they end up selling this to me for $4 because all their other Wii games are $4. So I think that was a decent deal because I haven't looked up the price on this, but I know it is at least worth more than $4. I've never played this. I don't have it in the collection. I have heard good things about it. So so I am happy to have it in the Wii collection now. But yeah, $4 for a new copy of Punch-Out, which I'm pretty happy with. Lily, you get more games. There you go. You also get that. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to give her the controller because it has some corrosion on it. So I'll just move that over to the side. Now, looking at the rest of this stuff here, I'll go ahead and grab these. So... At one point, made a random stop in a thrift store at one point throughout the past few weeks. End up finding this copy of Need for Speed Most Wanted 510 on the PSP. It is complete, and it was a whopping $2.50. So, I would say, good game, and worth it. <laughs> uh, got a couple other PSP games, not from a thrift store, mind you. Uh, but I end up getting them in a online deal. I picked up, I'd say about a month ago, online, I picked up a N64, and I want to say it was about $30, $35, and I asked, like, hey, um, this seller was selling several things, and I was like, hey, if I buy the PS, uh, not PS, what the hell am I saying? If I buy the N64, 
can you also include in Midnight Club 3 for free? Because this was $5. And the guy's like, yeah, sure, done. I got the N64, I got everything with it, but it was missing Midnight Club. And I messaged him back, and this guy really came through. I messaged him back, and I was like, hey, dude, uh, I got the N64, packing seemed fine, but it didn't have Midnight Club. What's up with that? And he quickly apologized. He's like, my God, I'm so sorry about that. I completely forgot that that was part of the deal. I forgot to throw it in. If your address is the same, I'll send it to you. And I said, yeah, sure, just send it to the same address. Well, I ended up getting a package, and it contained Midnight Club 3, and Wipeout Pulse, which he was selling this as well, too, for $5. And I didn't ask for it because I already have this game. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've... This, this is at least my second copy of the game here. So I already had this, which is why I didn't ask for it. But on top of that, Wipeout Pulse also contained... This is mainly for nostalgic purposes here. Check this out. Check this out. It contained a 32 megabyte... I'm not, miss I'm not saying that improperly megabyte not gigabyte <laughs> a 32 megabyte uh pro stick right here or memory stick pro duo so end up including that in there that was just you know inside the package which that made me laugh it was funny because i think the night i got it i showed devin when he came over uh paranoid coder my co my friend and co-host on our mod chat podcast i showed him that we both had a little bit of a nostalgic moment there but i messaged the guy back and i was like dude thank you for that like you you didn't even have to include it but you did that was awesome and he was like yeah well you know, I felt bad because I was going to send this to you anyways because we agreed to that. And I didn't need this. And I figured I should throw in something a little bit extra because I'm not going to use it. And, you know, you need that. So I got both of his PSP games and on top of that, a 32 megabyte memory card, which, hey, good for memes. I can't close that all right now. But either way, got all those. Now, I end up grabbing at one point in another recent-ish thrift store pickup. Um, well, not one that I've covered here, obviously, but just one of the recent trips. End up getting some cool demo discs here. So, the Exhibition, which I've never played these ones. I had one and two, but I never had these other ones. I got Exhibition, Volume 6. Exhibition, Volume 7. Bloodstone, well, 007 Bloodstone and Brink. And I believe each of these was 20% off. So this one, I would have gone, you know, a little bit under $4. But these other ones right here would have been $4 each, which I don't mind on that. So all good there. Uh, I'm going to have to repackage this, but I can't really do it with one hand, especially looking through the camera's view. Okay, okay, you know what? Fine. That would just, that would just go to this side with, with the bad controller. <laughs> all right. And here... This is where I started getting some of the other cool stuff. So, this is not complete right now. I actually have the pedals for this downstairs. I decided not to bring them up because I'm like, I'm just going to bring this up, show it on camera, and bring it back downstairs. <laughs> um, but I end up getting a original PlayStation. You can see the plug-in right there. End up getting an original PlayStation um, steering wheel set it was the steering wheel has all this stuff and it has uh the pedals as well too i've seen these before at thrift stores i am definitely gonna have to clean this up um, but even so aside from the dirt and kind of grime it's really in pretty solid shape and it was funny because when i was buying this there was a guy who was with his girlfriend and he looked over and he was talking with her he's like oh my god i want one of those so bad his girlfriend is asking, like, wait, what are you talking about? He's like, no, what that guy has. Like, I remember all oh, those Mad Cats steering wheels. I wanted one so bad. And my mom never got it for me. <laughs> so I guess I'll kind of live vicariously through him there on that. Uh, but I end up paying half off for this. So I got this with the pedals for $8.50 as opposed to the $19 they were asking. I figured, you know what, that, that's not horrible on there. So there we go, especially since it's complete. Because the problem I have is I see these at thrift stores a lot. But these things are never complete. I actually, I would have picked this one up when I went to Seattle a few episodes ago. I did see a complete one of these for the Xbox 360, which is kind of hard to find and they're worth a bit. And I would have gotten it, but I was in Seattle and I was flying back and the thing was huge. If it was in town, I would have gotten it. But because it was Seattle, I decided not to get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, 18, well, 850 for that. And again, just imagine that the pedals are there. I promise. I got the pedals with it. They match. We're good on all that. So here, this is some stuff that I was getting tonight. So first of all, this is the stack that I got from the thrift store that was doing a dollar on media. 
and they honored games. So I'll just go through this real quick and just remember that every game in this stack was a dollar. So I got a Super Game Boy. The Game Boy, essentially this is a Game Boy inside of a cartridge for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> But yeah, I got a Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo. I like to pick these up when I can. Again, a dollar for this and everything else here. NBA Jam on the Super Nintendo. Battlefield 3 for the PlayStation 3. Sean White Snowboarding Road Trip on the Wii. Sonic Heroes on PS2. And some of these, now we're getting it. Actually, this one has it, but some of these games uh, did not have the manuals. But at that point, that's kind of like my tipping point of I don't care. Many times I like it to be complete. But if I'm paying like a dollar per game at that point, I'm like, you know what? As long as the artwork and the disc and the case are there, I don't care if it's missing the manual. I paid a dollar for the game. Shadow the Hedgehog. Crash Tag Team Racing, which I always forget that this came out. I always completely forget that this was a thing. <laughs> so I've never played this and I never owned it until now. Tack and the Power of Juju, which I heard quite a few things about when I was a kid. I don't really know if it was good or bad, but for a dollar, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> Ed Ed Nettie, The Misadventures. Ed Ed Nettie is probably my favorite children's cartoon. <laughs> my favorite childhood cartoon. Every few years, I actually do a rewatch of it, and I still enjoy it just so much. So this is my weakness. I had to pick it up when I saw it. And Pac-Man World 2. This game is so good. I need to go back and play it. So yeah, every single one of these games here in this stack was a dollar. So I ended up checking out, and then I decided to look at the accessories and all that and the electronics. You see, the way this thrift store is set up is they normally put all the games behind the counter. And I've had times before where I always get the games, but I'll get them, and then most of the time... If I want to walk around the store, they say, okay, we need to hold the games back here. And there's been a few times they end up losing the games behind the counter, and they do find them, mind you, but then we have to wait in line if I'm, you know, if I'm with my girlfriend or not, but I have to wait in line. And then, you know, that could be two minutes or it could be 10 or 15 minutes. And then if they lose the games, they normally have to look around and they have to ask the person who put them there, but then that person is on break or they're at lunch, so then we have to wait a little bit. And the worst it's ever been, it's been like we waited 10 or 15 minutes in line and then we had to wait another 15, 20 minutes for them to find the games. So that's why I kind of just got everything. And then when we had the prices locked in, I kind of just bought there and then I looked around and I saw in like a cute little basket in the electronics area, there were three controllers and I bought two of them. I didn't buy the third one because it was just like a nasty third-party off-brand PS2 controller. But this here, I end up getting a PS3. This is a DualShock 3, not just 6-axis. It's a DualShock 3 uh, PS3 controller, so one of the good ones, uh, with the mini USB cable to boot. And I got... Oh, I just noticed this now. I got a pretty good-looking clone ps2 controller as you can see it doesn't say sony on there so it's not an official one but that's actually it feels and it looks pretty good and you know what for how much i spent on these i can't even be mad two dollars for this two dollars for this so that's what that is a great deal for a ps3 controller that's what i would expect to pay for a used bootleg ps2 controller so not even mad on that now the final thing i end up getting was right here and it was during i want to say it was during the haul where i ended up getting this thing here and i ended up getting uh these games and there's lily she did not come with the haul though thanks lily i end up grabbing this so i was looking at some of the games and I went on one of the days where they will pick a color, because as you can see, like this one says Y, this one says O, and what these shops do is they categorize everything in colors and tags. And so some days they'll say, hey, blue is 50% off, yellow is 25% off, Sunday, in this case, um, they were saying like, orange was 50 cents. And that means all items that have that orange tag are 50 cents no matter how big or small. But what happened was I was looking at some of the games and I ended up picking up these ones right here. And then I, I found that eventually. But then the lady behind the counter, behind the game counter, she was like, oh, there's a PlayStation up here 
And it was like, you couldn't even tell it was a PlayStation. It was just looking like that. It was on a counter with everything else. And even this was hidden. But she's like, oh, I have a PlayStation with Metal Gear Solid. And I was like, wait, oh, you do? Because I was looking at consoles, and some of the consoles they had were a little bit too overpriced, so I didn't get them. And she's like, yeah, there's a PlayStation for 50 cents with Metal Gear Solid. Are you interested? And I'm like, wait, 50 cents? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's on sale today. It says $34, but today it's on sale for, for 50 cents. Like, do you want it? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'd like to take a look at it. So, as you can see, it's clearly labeled here. Sony PlayStation with Metal Gear Solid, no controllers, $34. Oh. And uh, that that's true with what it is. End up opening it up. So this is the second copy of Metal Gear Solid that I have received this same haul. So it is the actual, this is, this is as you can see, this is how the original Metal Gear Solid was. This is not the greatest hits one, but that's it. That's how the discs look and everything. The game runs. It's in solid shape as well, too. So I think this is probably at least my third copy of the original Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Because I think I ended up getting my my original I ended up getting because I wanted to get the game. And this is only physical editions. I think I got a second one because it was so cheap. It was like $5 or less. I ended up getting, where is it? Where is it? Lily, where did you put my Metal Gear Solid? Here it is. I ended up getting this one tonight because it was a variant I didn't have and it was $2. And then I got this one right here because it came with a 50 cent PlayStation. But as you can see, Metal Gear Solid here, complete as well. It has the composite video cable, it has the power cable, and it has the PlayStation itself. This thing does work. I have tested it. It has the parallel I.O. port, so on top of that, it was one of my favorite models to look for. And then, for the specific model number, if people are interested in that, it is a 7001 model. And on top of that as well, too, I have already opened up the PlayStation, installed a mod chip in it, closed it back up, tested it. So this thing is modded and ready to go as well, too, ready to play all your import and backup and original games that you want to play. So quite happy with that. I kind of just now when I get a hold of PlayStations, like the first thing I do after testing them is I mod them up just so they'll all be modified. The only one I have not modified is... Last year, I did a unboxing of a PlayStation that I picked up. It was almost complete in box uh, from a thrift store. And that one, just because it's in such nice shape and because I'm keeping it in the box, you know, kind of just as a centerpiece to have, I haven't opened it. I haven't modded it or anything. That's going to be the only one I'll know that isn't modded. But at this point, because I have several consoles, I just like to know that all of them are chipped. So this is in this does have a M3 MM3. I almost said M33, but no, that was a PSP custom firmware group. <laughs> Technically one person. But this was a MM3 mod chip that I installed in here. So for 50 cents, I'd say that's pretty solid with Metal Gear Solid. And then on top of that, if I'm complaining about it not having a controller, check this out. Blad Ow. There we go. So there we have for all together Tree Fitty. This is the Loch Ness Monsters console right here. We got a nice box to put everything in. We got a controller. We got Metal Gear Solid. We got the PlayStation. And we got the cables. And, I don't know, add on like a few cents for the chip that I ended up installing in there. But either way, okay, less than $4. We got all this set up. So I'm pretty happy with that right there. I wanted to fin it. Well, start with Metal Gear Solid. And guess what? We're finishing with Metal Gear Solid. Anyways, thank you all for watching, everyone. It is absolutely appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I normally drop these videos once or twice a month, something like this. Uh, this one's probably going to be dropping in October as well. But yeah, and this is when I normally drop these things, so... I enjoy making these, and if you want to see some stuff that is not so much exclusive to Thrifty Gaming Pickups, that's more still modding related, uh, but has a little more shine to it, and has some more editing, uh, feel free to check out my main channel down below in the description. It's Mr. Mario 2011. Anyways, Lily, hopefully you enjoyed that pickup. Hopefully you did. She looks bored. Oh, but look at that. So cute when she just used her paws like that. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Again, a like would absolutely be appreciated if you like this video. A dislike is fine as well, too. But you will make this dog a very depressed and sad dog.